Let's Get Two presents Go, Go Astro! Go, Go Astros! A focus on H Town Hardball. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. <laughs> And that's right. Welcome back to Go Go Astros. You see, guys, we even do episodes when we lose, although maybe beneficial guys that we lost so early. It took us we had enough time to really get over it. Uh, we're flushing the game. Good morning, Andy. How are you feeling? No, oh, I'm great. Hey, me and Kathleen Turner are having a voice off later. Yeah. Uh, Brian, how are you this morning? I've had better mornings and I've had better nights. Right. Well, like I said, we're going to flush the game. So we'll definitely spend a few minutes talking about the game and then we'll talk about what's to come. And you know me, Brian, I'm going to need to get into some of the ridiculousness of Astros fans online because boy, we don't handle adversity very well. Um, We'll start with you, Brian, just overall, where was the game lost last night? In the first inning. I didn't say when I said where. So also, in the first inning to Bryce Harper. So, um, you know, they gave up two runs on that uh, on that home run and didn't score any. You know, that but was it was a, a, you blast. Know, a traditional thing we get to say. It was a total team effort. The starting pitching was bad. The hitting was bad. The decisions by Dusty Baker were bad. Put them all together. The combination was worse. Yeah. Um, the the home run Bryce Harper hit was was. I know it didn't necessarily go far because it went so hard and so straight. Um, It was a blast. Andy, when you get down this that quickly, how much does it, you think it changes the approach of the guys at the plate? Like, do they, do they get out of what they do normally? Cause I you're mean, to now catch up. Yeah. I mean, it shouldn't for major league hitters. They shouldn't adjust anything at that point. But I think the natural tendency is to try to catch up in a hurry and get back in the game and and get those runs back. Um, And unfortunately, we did the exact opposite of that um, with our approach to Ranger Suarez, at least early on, where I think he threw, what, five pitches in the first inning. Um, Altuve was a first strikeout. And, yes, Castellanos made a great play on it and probably doesn't make that play again, although he's done it now twice in the series. Um, but Pena was impatient. Alvarez does not look like he's comfortable at all. Um, and you could kind of tell from there it was going to be a rough night. And then you tack on the uh, Phillies were told they were playing home run derby and nobody told the Astros hitters. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you're going to play home run derby, you should at least let the other team know. Um, it, it, it just a bad night all around. The great thing about baseball though, is it is one game out of a potential seven game series. You have the ability to answer this and, like you say, flush it away with a good performance tonight. And there is nothing – I know we all want to talk about momentum. We all want to talk about clutch. We want to talk about all these things you can't measure. But there is no carryover from what happened last night, just like there was no carryover from what happened in Houston to Philadelphia, to what's potentially going to happen tonight. Christian Javier could go out and throw a dog of a game. He could throw an ace of the game. Um, I will tell you that if we don't score more than zero runs, it doesn't matter what he does. It doesn't matter what he does. Hopefully, though, um, they they actually already hit Nola well. They see him well. Hopefully, that works into our favor. Uh, Brian, we could spend all day questioning Dusty Baker, and I think there's a million reasons why and a million reasons why that's valid. But my question to you comes into questioning of the entire front office staff. Everybody and their mother knew that the Phillies can't hit fastballs, but they knock breaking pitches. Well, we saw it, right? Over the wall, through the wall, around the wall, it didn't matter. Here's my question. Why throw McCullers last night and now line him up a junk ball pitcher for games three and seven, as opposed to Javier, who throws fastballs, therefore lining him up for, for games three and seven? What was the logic there? I mean, I very much agree with the logic, the implied logic of your question here, but let me try to answer it from, you know, Dusty Baker's standpoint and possibly the front office's standpoint, but mostly I think Dusty Baker's standpoint. 
I have confidence in my guys and I line my guys up based on my confidence in them. Verlander is my best pitcher. Robert's my second best pitcher. And I think Lance is my third best pitcher. And there's been, feels very little sort of, you know, whatever sort of matchup information is provided. Uh, Phillies were the eighth best team hitting off-speed pitches over the course of the regular season. Mm -hmm. The fact that they can hit break, <coughs> breaking pitches is well known. I assume that was communicated by the front office down to Dusty Baker, because if I could find it on a baseball newsletter yesterday, Joe Sheehan's newsletter, then I assume the many people in the Astros front office could figure that out. Um, Dusty tends to manage less based on here's what the numbers say, here's what the analytics say, then I have faith in my guys and I will show faith in my guys that they can do what I think they can do. That's great if you're a squad leader in the military. It's not so great if you're trying to manage an analytically driven game like baseball. Andy, you have any thoughts on on that as well? I mean, just to me, it's perplexing. I, for me, it's more of a what happened to Lance McCullers. Um, first of all, I fully acknowledge that he is not even a year removed from his, his injury in the playoffs last year. Um, and the recovery from that took a lot longer than anybody was expecting it to happen. And prior to that, he was coming back from a major surgery. So I don't know that we're seeing premium Lance McCullers right now. Um, but I also think he is a guy that has gotten a lot of run off of 24 consecutive curveballs in 2017 and has fallen in love with that pitch to the detriment of some of the other things he can do. Because he used to be a guy that could throw 97, 98. I don't know that he can throw that fastball anymore. He certainly doesn't appear to have any faith in it um, because he doesn't throw it a whole lot. Now, maybe he doesn't throw that hard anymore. Maybe other things are more effective, and that's what the analytics are showing him. But the reality is that everybody knows that if you're going to beat the Phillies, you're going to have to throw fastballs, and you're going to have to place the ball well. He did neither of those things last night, and the results were fairly predictable whether or not he was tipping pitches, whether or not they knew what was coming, because if he's on, he has enough stuff. He has enough stuff. It wouldn't matter. Um, but last night was just the worst of all possible circumstances and results for Lance McCullers. And it's more to the question to me of if this is a team that we're facing that struggles fastballs, why isn't Kristen Javier potentially game three and game seven? versus Lance McCullers, who does not throw fastballs anymore. That 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 to me is a bigger concern, and that's on Dusty. Okay. Anything else you guys want to add about last night's game? Um, it sucked. It sucked. No, it, it sucked. Yeah. Brian? Yeah. Uh, Simultaneously uh, sucked and blowed. There's one analytical point that's worth making here. Lance McCullers was allowed to face the Phillies the third time through the order, despite everything. What is your rule? That. What, I, what I love about you, Brian, is you have the same rule that Jessica has that applies to 6th Street. Nothing good happens on 6th Street after 1.45 in the morning, and your rule is third time through the order, right? Well, because it applies to every pitcher, and we saw it in game one, hurt Verlander and Dusty Suck with him, you know. The Phillies were going to bring in their leverage relievers uh, being up for nothing. They sat them down. Um, that creates a modest advantage for the Phillies. You know, even though the Astros had been a four nothing game rather than a seven nothing game, the Astros probably wouldn't have thrown Urquidy, though they might have in that situation. So that is one point of last night's game that creates an advantage for the Phillies moving into uh, into tonight's game that they didn't have to do it. And, you know, the third time through the order penalty is real. And apparently Dusty thinks his job is to impress John Smoltz, who has decided there's a bunch of data out there that prove this. And I've decided that it's wrong because, well, I've decided it's wrong. Um, I kind of like Dusty to uh, please Astros fans more. Hey, and again, you have Hunter Brown sitting on your sitting in your bullpen. You've got Jose Arquiti sitting in your bullpen. You have Luis, Luis Garcia sitting in your bullpen. It was very clear after the second inning that McCullers did not have what was necessary to win this game. There's no reason other than to make him eat it, which I don't think Dusty was trying to do, to have him go as long as he did to face um, Schwarber third time because uh, the results were predictable, as Brian said. Um, had he been going well the first two times, sure, you get, you know, but it's, what, five to nothing at that point? 
Hey. It, was in, it was four to nothing entering the inning. Yeah. So what what is the what has he got to prove at that point? You 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 need to shut them down. And once they put Arcady in, once they put Stan again, our bullpen did what we thought our bullpen was going to do. They shut down. Guess what? Stan throws fastballs. Arcady's fastball is not that impressive, but he still throws it. And he throws it in the strike zone, and he's got a right. nice change up against those lefty hitters. Well, maybe we're, we're, we're you know, I, I obviously, if there's a game seven, it's going to be an all hands on deck situation anyway. Um, all right, we're going to flush it because, you know, I again, I had the Astros in six, and this would would have been one of the games I would have picked to have had them lost before we knew the, the, the lineup of who was supposed to pitch. And then we saw the lineup, and then the lineup changed. But the fact is, is we were not going to win three in a row in Philadelphia. The question I will start off by asking, and I know that it's it's not making an excuse, but it's asking a question, how much – and I'll, I'll let Brian tell me I'm wrong first. Brian, did the rain out and therefore them getting to shift their rotation, did it help them? Or is it just we're going to see the same arms in a different amount of – in a different order and it does, it's not going to matter? I will make a counter argument. The way the series has played out after game three, the rain out has now helped the Astros. They get their best to their second best pitcher going tonight and a good matchup against the Phillies against the Phillies best pitcher. And the Phillies have pushed their guy. They really don't want to pitch, but don't have any choice. And Noah Syndergaard to game three with a matchup, excuse me, to game five uh, with a matchup against Justin Verlander. So, you know, it may, hey, I'd much rather have Javier on the mound tonight against Nola than Lance McCullers. And I would have said that, you know, ahead of time. I definitely know that's true now after last night. Andy? Um, I mean, I, I think it's an advantage when you are potentially throwing two bullpen games and you don't have to in a row. But I think it's negligible because at the end of the day, if you were throwing Nola Wheeler back-to-back -back again, yeah, that's great. Wheeler has been pushed to the sixth game. And that's – I don't know what's happening with Zach Wheeler, but there feels like there's something that the Phillies are not disclosing about – his health, his availability, his arm, whatever, um, because there's no reason you would push him to a game that you might not be playing if he's if he's good, if he's all healthy. Um, so it, it doesn't matter, though, if our guys don't start hitting. Um, you know, we're throwing a lot on Lance McCullers, and, yes, he had a shit game yesterday. Jordan Alvarez is three for 31 in World Series at bats. Yeah. And he, he's batting third. And I'm not saying change the lineup. But if your three-hole hitter is batting less than 100, that's a problem, uh, especially when Altuve can manage to get on, when Pena can get on. You've got to have guys driving that in. Um, last night, Altuve, um, Alvarez, Bregman, and Tucker, I think, had no hits. Maybe Tucker had one. Um, but the top of our lineup just didn't hit, and that's been a story for a while in the, these playoffs. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, I I think the reason why I, I would look past the offense in this instance is because they did score five runs and was it five runs in two consecutive games, right? So they've shown they can hit. I just I, and you're right. It, maybe it's just the most glaring thing. Um, well, looking it's also at, this with the offense. Well, how do you fix the offense? I don't know. You just go out there and hit better. Sure. Right. You know, it is it is easier for us to talk about pitching moves in which pitcher to go and how to choose that. Because, as Andy says, yeah, of course you keep Jordan Alvarez in the lineup and in a key part of the lineup because over the long run, he's going to hit like crazy and you have faith that he's going to figure it out at some point in the next four games. Um, will he? I sure hope so. Odds are that he will, but, you know, everything in baseball but is. I think it's a problem for me, though, when David Hensley seems to have the best approach at the plate. And then gets pitched uh, during his at bat. For some reason. Yeah, well, no, I was okay with I was okay with that because hey, this is a game we're losing. Let's get Trey Mancini a chance to yeah. get something yeah. good here, right? There's no there's no downside and only upside to that. I was fine with that move. But at that point, yeah, I don't know that it mattered one way or the other. He wasn't going to hit a seven run home run. Um, but some of our guys believe their own hype a little bit. I know Altuve swings wildly, and he's going to be Hall of Fame Hall of Famer swinging wildly for the rest of his damn career. And that's fine. Yep. But Ranger Suarez is a guy who was pitching on uh, short rest, who has not gone long in games, and you help him out by swinging at the first pitch. Pena follows that up. 
by swinging at the first pitch um, and putting the ball in play. And that's great if it goes in. But the reality is you need to make him throw pitches early. Part of McCullers' issue is he's through through 20 pitches in the first inning. Um, and, and you run out of gas that way. It's what happens to Verlander more often than not. It's that you know, there's no efficiency of pitches, and our batters aren't helping out with that. If you're down 0-1, does it really, really matter if you're Jose Altuve? Probably not. But you've now given Ranger Suarez basically a free out. And no, I mean, as we learn, in, as we learn in as we learn in analytics land, free outs are bad. All right. Well, let's talk about the rest of the series. Um, first of all, Astros Twitter, the chicken is back. I did it this morning. We're waking up the bats again. Cholesterol, be damned. Well, um, I am, or the opposite. Right, <laughs> the opposite. Okay. Game five, do you throw Verlander or do you throw – I mean, does that one thing that maybe you get helped with by the day off, the extra day off is now you could throw Fromber if you felt like that was the best matchup, Brian? Who do you throw in game six then? Verlander. Okay. Um, or does it matter? Like if it's an elimination yeah. game, do you change your strategy? Yeah, I still think they throw Verlander. He'd be on regular – he'd be on regular rest – um and you know as we've talked about many times Verlander is a creature of habit and so throwing him off that is there are some risk involved with that you need to, to win the series you need a good start from Verlander and you need a good start from proper it doesn't matter whether in game five or game six for each of them Andy thoughts yeah I mean for me and I'm I'm the kind of person that Las Vegas makes a lot of money on. So you take that, you take for what I'm, what I'm about to say with that <laughs> knowledge. Justin Verlander can't continue to pitch poorly in every World Series start that he gets. It's right. just it doesn't feel statistically possible to me that a guy that throws the way he throws in the regular season and the way honestly he normally throws in the division series and the championship series to pitch as poorly as he does in the World Series because the conditions don't change that much. He is due for a good, solid start in the World Series. Um, I, I choose to believe that's going to happen in Game Five. Yeah, I, I tend to agree, and and I also, you know, I think too, like the ERA is really the concern in the World Series. Obviously, judging by wins and losses, there were two World Series games he could have easily been the winner in in 2017, and we wouldn't be having this particular I, narrative. I bet that I bet that he, you know, catches a line drive if it's it to him this time. Even if you just, oh my God. I mean, and that's the thing. Like we could already, we can start to think about, um, I mean, obviously what ifs, right. And, and what if Cowie, Hen if how, how Kendrick's home run goes two inches to the right, or what if, if he catches that ball, the Astros win that game, you know, then all of a sudden it's a whole different series, obviously, mm -hmm. because, because Philly is now would have definitely have their back against it. However, it's just a two, one series. What are some things that give you confidence going forward? Andy, we'll begin with you that the Astros can win this thing in six. I'm going to say this, you know, the Astros will lose the next two games because that's how life works. The Astros have the better team. And ultimately, I think that should show at some point. I don't know that they win the series. Um, I, mean, I still think they do, but I don't know that that matters in winning the series. But I don't think they're a the team that's going to lose three games in a row to be eliminated. Um, I think that would be a difficult ask for the Phillies to do. Um, so what I hope happens is that we have a very solid game tonight, uh, tie up the series 2-2 with the knowledge that we go back to Houston. No matter um, what. No matter what. And then you have Verlander in a position to put us up in the series versus trying to save the season. Um, I think that's a, a better place for him, honestly, at this point. So – my hope is, and that's that's kind of it's difficult to answer your question because I, all I've got right now is hope. Um, but the hope is based on the fact that we have 162 learned, games from Princess Leia. Hope matters. Thanks, Princess Leia. Um, we have 169 games that say we're a pretty good team, and now we've got you know two that say maybe not as good as we thought. I don't think that's the truth. So I'm, I'm hoping based on what we've seen this season, the best 
version of our team shows up for the next two nights. Brian, I'm with him. Rebellions are built on hope. We're going to keep yeah. that going again. But now we're, what do the numbers tell you, Brian? Like, why do you feel like this is a, a, a game where Jim's going to end up being right? and We've won it in six. Yeah, I, uh, I feel I should start with help me, Obi-Wan Javier. You're, you're my only hope. <laughs> uh, fit in on theme here, but uh, Christian Javier has an excellent fastball, the invisible, that um, is really hard to pick up because it has ride that stays up in the strike zone, induces a lot of weak pop-ups uh, and strikeouts against a team that's much better against hitting breaking pitches, which we saw again last night, which leads to game five in which you have Justin Verlander, Again, and going to win the Cy Young Award, and also excellent top of the uh, top of the zone fastball, and then Framber Valdez, who again has pitched great all season, pitched great in Game Two. Hey, we got three really good starters lined up here, um, and should be good to go here. We also have a fully rested bullpen. Maybe Dusty will use it. Well, and you know, and, and of course, it's also they got to put guys on the other side too, and you do have Nola tonight, who again. The Astros tagged for five runs, and so I don't – obviously, it's it's fool's errand to expect the same thing again, but you at least go into to face a pitcher. And we talked about it this a million times. When the Astros face a pitcher they're not super familiar with, they don't hit. But not only are they familiar with Nolan now, but they have actual success against him. And then the next night it's Syndergaard, and then the next night it's a Wheeler who for some reason – Philadelphia doesn't seem to trust that much. If the Astros hit, I think that they, I think they can win the next three. Yeah, it's it'll be interesting to see because Nola is a very good pitcher, and I would think everybody would say that what the Astros did to him um, in Game One wasn't fluky, but it's going to be difficult for us to repeat five runs against him. Uh, not impossible, um, and so we have history of doing it. And some some guys that didn't hit against him have the opportunity to. But it, it's as an Astros fan, I feel a whole lot better about facing an Aaron Nola than I would about facing a Triple A call up who has no no track record at all because those are the guys we don't hit for six innings. Um, it, it's we've got to see we've got to start sequencing our offense, which is a really fun way of saying we have to stack hits on top of hits. We had what five hits last seven hits last night. Um, none of those were together except for getting Gurriel and Hensley in the second inning. Um, you can't score runs unless you're sequencing hits, unless you do what the Phillies did and just hit everything off the, over the fence, which I guess is one way to negate our defensive advantage as well. Can't defend a ball that you can't catch. Brian, anything you want to add on to that? Yeah, I mean, hey, last year in the American League Championship Series, the Astros got outscored by 12 runs in games one through three outscored the uh, Red Sox by 21 runs over the last three games of that series. Um, doesn't necessarily mean they're going to do that over the next three games, but remember how lousy we felt last year after three games of the American League Championship Series and how that turned around immediately. Can that happen again? Maybe. Will it happen again? We'll see. Yeah, I, again, I, t I tend to have the faith of that, that it will happen. Uh, last thing I want to bring up is Evan Gaddis uh, got into it on Twitter last night. You see, if I get if I stay off Twitter, I we miss all of these, uh, all these, these gems. So he basically went after Astros fans saying you Astros fans aren't being very supportive of your Astros fan of your Astros right now. So then I started to kind of look at our fan base across the Twitter sphere and just they are definitely think that it was over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor. Yeah, I think that's pretty common among humans. And uh, Twitter is just a place where humans get to write exactly what they think at that moment. So, you know, I'm pretty sure we'd have said similar things after the uh, imagine what would have been written by Astros fans on Twitter after the pool also run. And uh, imagine how they'd have all changed that after the Oswald start. True, Andy. Reactionary and churlish. I mean that that's Twitter. It's what am I feeling right this moment? Everybody needs to know Everybody that that is what Twitter that, but that is what Twitter is. And so, what am I feeling right this moment? Oh my God, the Astros suck! It's the end of the world because some of these people, honestly, on Twitter have no life outside of Astros fandom, or this is the place where they can talk about 
their teams because nobody in their household wants to listen to them. Um, and that's real. And, you know, for some people, it's cathartic. It comes across as whining a lot because the reality in a seven game series, especially nobody, I don't think anybody was saying Astros in four. So you expected to lose a game or two. So if you expect to lose a game or two, it doesn't matter how you lose them. Yeah. You're going to lose them. So great. If we still all say Astros six, Astros seven, Phillies are going to pick up one more win as far as I think. And, you know, they're done as far as you two think. And that's great. But you can't, it's the highs of the highs, the lows of the lows. And the team rides that middle line. Uh, you look at Bregman's interview after the game last night. Uh, super calm, super collected, doesn't appear to be worried at all. And I would guess to a man in that dugout, nobody's worried about losing last night. And in a lot of ways, um, those of you who have not played sports at a higher level, that 7-0 game is a whole lot easier to stomach than a 2-1 to one loss or a, I don't know, six to five loss in 10 innings. Um, there's a lot less hangover from a 7-0 loss when you were basically out of it after the second inning. I think that's very true. And speaking of being out of it, we are out of here. I still think Astros and six, go Strohs. Yeah, I said Astros and six, Fromper shoves twice. Still, still, still on it. Go Strohs. High stock and Theraflu and Hull's Philiptus and Strohs. All right, guys, I'll get this out and up after I edit it from my chewing out my student. I've got five more lined up, ready to go. Leave it in. Yeah. I'll know you work. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Sounds good, guys. Thank you.